get started. Okay, everyone, I wanna welcome you to our introduction to library databases webinar. It is the first webinar in our LRD faculty webinar series. This is something new we're trying and I'm excited that you all were available to join us today. So welcome and thank you for attending. Um, today, basically what I'm going to do is to give you an overview of the library's databases. These are available both to you and your students on campus and more importantly, off campus. Um, before we jump into the databases, I wanted to point out a few things. Everything I am discussing today is on our library's website. That is udc.libguides.com. You can get to us through my UDC. You can get to us through Blackboard. You can get to us through the UDC homepage, or you can Google us, just do UDC library. We are the first thing that pops up. A couple of features I wanted to point out that are important to faculty. First things first, up on our website, we have these tabs, and we have a faculty tab. This is our tab specifically for information for our faculty. It includes things like how to put in a request uh, for item purchases, um, how to request library instructions and the various sorts of library instruction that we offer. It also includes things like our help with research and funding and accreditation. This is available to you online at any time. Feel free to peruse it. Um, if there's information you need that you do not see available through there, please contact us. We are happy to help out. Um, available to you and all of your students, we have our built-in chat system here. Students and yourselves are welcome to chat us whenever you see this blue chat button. If we are not available, it immediately puts you into our frequently asked questions. And if that doesn't give us give you the answer you're looking for, it does send us an email to all of our to all of our faculty librarians. We are here to help you. Scrolling down a bit, we have our We Can Help box. What I'd like to point out here is our schedule and appointment option. When you click on this, you have the opportunity to schedule an appointment to meet with any librarian. In non-COVID times, this is in-person and online. Right now, we are limiting our appointments to online only simply for safety reasons. But all you need to do is click online, pick your librarian, pick the help you need, pick a time. We do operate on regular business hours, usually about 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. That said, we understand everyone has a lot going on. We are happy to meet with you outside of these hours. Just email at ask at udc.libanswers.com. Again, this goes to all of our reference librarians, and we are here to help you um, at any time. I've done weekend appointments. I've done evening appointments. Um, we understand that these times are chaotic. I had my toddler at home for 14 weeks, so things do get a little bit crazy. So again, thank you for joining us today. What I'm going to do is give you a basic introduction to library databases, and I'm going to show you two different ways to use library databases. The first one is right here, our UDC search. This is our collective catalog with all of the local WRLC schools. WRLC stands for the Washington Research Library Consortium. It is a membership of nine local universities and we share print and in some cases, digital resources. And so yes, even in COVID times, you can request books for delivery for pickup at UDC. After I show you UDC search, I'm gonna dive into our A to Z resource list and that lists all the databases that are available to you. And I will show you through one of the most popular databases that we have. So to start, um, just to show you the features of our UDC search, you can go ahead and search in the search box right away. Or if you'd like to dive into the catalog without doing a search, all you need to do is click go. Our UDC search searches not only print books and eBooks, but it also includes a lot of articles from our databases. This is important because while we aren't Google, this is our attempt to be Google. And so I wanna point out some things that are available to you. Right here, we have our Ask a Librarian Square that jumps out our chat feature. So if you get lost as you're going, that is available to you. Up, you can sign uh, up here in the top, and I always recommend signing in. As, and as a UDC member, you are an external user. I know that doesn't make sense, but basically what it means is we get our information from the banner system and do not create it within the library itself. And the reason you wanna sign in is this catalog called Primo VE uses a lot of personalization features. So as you do your search, you can save searches to your account. You will also see uh, you can request items from other schools and you will see information about that tailored specifically to you and your account. Faculty get different privileges for students, get different privileges for staff and things like that. So it's always important to sign in because you will see different information. So a couple of features I wanna point out is you can always do a new search, browse, journal search, 
search by citation, or jump to our full database list here. I will be going into a couple of these features in depth in a few minutes, but I basically wanted to walk you through what it's like to do a basic search in this catalog. And I'm going to default to one of the classics I use in almost all of my classes. Gentrification, a lot of our, whoops, it helps if you spell it correctly. <laughs> a lot of our students um, here, one of our new features, as you can see, it does spelling correction. Um, a lot of our students care about gentrification, so it is one of the resources I like to, or one of the searches I like to do over and over again. So we have our search box here, and as you'll notice, we have a drop-down menu. It defaults to everything. This means search everything, print, digital, you name it, across UDC, across WRLC, search everything. When you do our drop-down, you can limit it to UDC library catalog, meaning you are only gonna look for things available at UDC. So you will only see our books. You will only see our articles. If you limit it to articles, you are obviously limiting it to only articles. If you have course reserves, you can limit it to material listed on our course reserves, or you can limit to the digital collections held here at UDC. So that's the difference of those drop down menus. Most of the time I recommend just leaving it at everything. It's always easier to narrow your search than it is broaden it. You also have the advanced search feature here, which I will jump into in a second. But I want to point out a few things here. This catalog database is very dynamic and it changes with what you search. So if you're searching something very broad, oftentimes you will get a summary topic here at the top from our Credo database or one of our other reference databases. On the left hand side, you will see our filters. And here in the center, you will also see our um, results. You can save a specific query. This is another reason you want to sign in, or you can personalize your queries. So if you are looking for set disciplines, you can set that in your account. It will only search for these topics in specific disciplines. Over here on our left-hand side, um, here I, one of my specific disciplines was business and economics. I'm going to depersonalize this just so you can see some of the other features. <clears throat> So over on our left-hand side, just like Amazon, you see these filters. In library lingo, they're called facets or limiters, but basically they're filters. You can limit, you can sort by relevance, doing date, title, author. You can do availability. So if you're looking for peer review journals, open access, meaning those open access journals that are available online, held at the library means specifically held at the UDC library. You can limit by subject matter, you can limit by creator. You can limit by institution. So if you know what you're looking for is at American University, you can limit to American University. You can limit by library. This is easy at UDC. We have one main library with book collections. You can limit by resource type, genre, collection. My favorite is the creation date filter. So this is where if you only want stuff in the last 10 years, you can change the date here to get stuff in the last 10 years. If you know what journal you're looking for, you can limit by title language. And if you're looking for new material, you can limit by that. So just to show you the difference, I'm going to limit to, let's say, the last 10 years for gentrification. And we go from 45,600 results down to 2,700, uh, just over 2,700 results. So as you can see, that limits things quite severely. And what's nice about this system is you can remember your filters for future searches, because again, you can pin this to your account, or you can remove them and go back to where you were. All of these features I'm showing you today, they may look different in all of our databases, but they operate the same way. So now I want to show you the features within the catalog itself. So say we want this book here, Gentrification. As you can see, it says check for available services. As I mentioned, this is searching not just the UDC library, but all of the WRLC libraries. And what you can see is while it is not available at UDC, it is available at these four other schools. So you would like to request CLS request delivery. You just click on that. And this is another reason you want to be signed in. This does not show up if you are not signed in. And then you just fill out the form and hit send request. And then this way it goes through our system and the other school says, yes, you can have it. And they send it on, our, uh, on a truck to UDC to be picked up at their circulation desk. And you will receive an email along the way when it is ready or if it is no longer available either because it's lost at the other school or it's got a restriction for some reason. Um, and always check your spam filter. We have discovered for some reason those end up in spam. 
A couple of things I'd like to point out, you can email the record to yourself, you can save the permalink. One thing all of our students love is the citation button. When you click on this, there are built-in citation styles. And yes, this has been updated for the MLA 7th. And while this does not do the in-text citation, it does provide the citation for the reference list. I will caution, it's not 100% perfect, but it does help. You can also export to RecWorks or print the file if you'd like it. When you scroll down, not only do you see information about where the book is available, but you see the details about the item itself. So in this case, you can click on the various author names, you can see more about it, you can see the contents. Many of the books also include summaries. And if this is a book on the shelf at WRLC, underneath you'll see a feature here where you can browse the books that are shelved right next to one another. Another thing I'd like to point out is the subjects. These are hyperlinked. So you will see all the subjects that have been applied to these items. And if you really like an item, you can click on it and it will take you to everything else with that subject heading. So that is what a book looks like. Scrolling down to show you what an article looks like, as you can see here, it says available online. We'll just click on this. And again, you have all of those same features to email, site, and all those things. But you'll see here where it says full text availability and you can click on the link. Some of these will have one link, some of these will have multiple links. We try our best to link wherever we can. Depending on what resource it jumps you to, in this case, I'm going to have to sign in. You just sign in every time using your UDC email credentials. And here you go, we have access to this ebook that we can read online, download, share, all of those functions are available to you. And again, scrolling down, you see the various uh, authors being linked, other titles related to this, um, more contents. Uh, and anytime you search one of these catalogs, your keywords will be highlighted so you can see where things are available. And here, I'm going to jump into an article, same thing. When you click on it, all of those features are available. And here we're going to go to ProQuest. And I apologize if my internet is a bit slow. We have competing <laughs> FaceTime's going on in my home right now. So here we go. It's just routing through and it takes you directly to the article. And then this functions like everything else. Email it, save it, print it. I'm going to show you a bit more um, of searching in these databases. But here is our attempt. As you can see, we've jumped from just our catalog. We jumped into uh, ProQuest eBook Central. Here we have a ProQuest article. So this in UDC search is our attempt to be that Google feature. It doesn't always work. It, you know, not all of the vendors play nicely with one another, but this is our attempt to link things together in one location to give you access to that material. So now I wanna show you a couple other features here. For faculty members, we know there are specific journal titles that you like. So if we scroll up and click journal search, what you will see here is our specific journal list. We have organized where we can the journals by category. So say you are in business economics, you can go fully into the business and economics or say you can narrow down to demography. And then under that category, you will see specific journals classified under demography, their availability on our campus or online. You can also search for a specific title and there is autofill. So in this case, I'm just gonna to go to library leadership and management. It's available online and you will see when you click onto these links, what coverage we have. And in some instances, you will be able to search within that journal itself. So always be sure when you're looking to also check um, you know, where it says available from. This means we have all of the material available from January 1st, 2010 up to today. This is important because some databases, if you see multiple ones of these, have different coverage. And we will also let you know if there's an embargo. Many of these databases limit access. So either we don't have the most recent six months or we don't have the most recent year. Some, like this one, you have full access up to the current subscription. So those things are important to pay attention to if you are hunting for a specific item. Another great thing when you are hunting for a specific item is up here, our search by citation. Here is our ability to try to get you what we like to call citation chaining or 
citation tracking where you can put in the information you have for an article, book, or a journal. You fill this out and then you click submit. And if we have it, we do our best to say, hey, it's in this database. If we don't have it, it helps you fill your ILL request form out. So these are useful tools if you're trying to hunt down one specific item. One other thing I wanna go back to, just go back and start a new search. When you find an item you like, if you don't necessarily need it at that moment, we have this pin feature built in. So all you need to do is click the pin and that adds the item to your list. And then when you go up to either your account or just this pin here, you will see all of your saved searches, all of your saved items, and if you wish, your search history. You can add labels to categorize these items. Um, and this is a great way if you wanna do a lot of research but don't necessarily need the item. This is like having a lot of tabs open in your browser, but instead it saves it to your account and you do have to be signed in for this function to work. But I wanted to point that out because it can be very useful. So before I go on, are there any questions about UDC search? Please feel free to pop them in the chat or raise your hand and I will try to unmute you. I'm not seeing anything come in, so we will move on to our next item. So I'm going back here to the library's homepage. And if you scroll down again, right under our search box for UDC search, we have a link for our A to Z resource list. And this is where a lot of the heavy research is done. This is our list of all the databases we subscribe to and that you have access to. Right now we have 239, this will fluctuate. We added two trial databases in the past day that you have access to right now. I'm sure you saw the emails I sent out. So a couple of features of this page that I wanna point out. First, here on the right-hand side, these are our popular databases. This is kind of like Google ranking. These are the ones that are used the most. These are the ones that your students are using. These are the ones that we recommend because we teach with them a lot. Underneath, you will see our new and trial databases. Anytime you see a trial database, if you do go ahead and use those, we may or may not be subscribing. So please leave us comments. It is very useful to us to know if that is something we should put money towards purchasing, either in the short term or the long term. So that is very useful to us. Scrolling back up the page here, you will see we have drop down menus. These drop down menus organize the databases by subject matter. We have done our best to try to link these databases where they are most applicable. So things like causes has its own area. Uh, communications, because it's more multi-subject, has its own field. So things like uh, nursing would be under the healthcare professions and things like that. So this is our attempt to try to limit, you know, instead of you having to look at 239 databases, maybe you only have to look at five because of criminal justice. If you're not quite sure what subject you want, but you know what kind of material you want, we have our database types menu. So archives, this is great for things like images and primary documents. Ebooks, that's pretty clear, ebook resources. Uh, government documents, these are government created uh, information, um, files, images, reports, all of that. We have a specific image list, indexes, uh, just what it sounds like, this is an indexing service, and newspapers. If you have favorite vendors, we do limit by vendor here. You can also search for a specific database if you wish. Our alphabet up here means you just jump to that letter. So say you wanna to go to JSTOR, you just click on J and that takes you to all the J databases and there you go, you have JSTOR. Another thing you, I like to recommend is you control F. That's a fun way we have, serve, we have summaries of all the content of the databases. So say you want a map, if you just control F and click map, you can see what databases have maps in them. That's a great, you know, control F is a trick librarians use all the time to find information quickly. So what I'm gonna do right now is give you a demo of one of our most popular databases. This is the one a lot of our students use to start their research. And it's also one of our broadest databases. And that is Academic Search Premier. It is alphabetically at the top of our list. It is at the top of our popular file. Um, this is the database that most of your students are going to to start their research simply because it is the broadest there is. And I wanna show you, and again, as I had mentioned in UDC, uh, UDC search, all of our databases may look a little bit different so they operate the same. So things I'm talking about here translate over to our other databases. 
So here we have kicked you directly into the advanced search. If this is too much, you can go down to the basic search, but I think at the faculty level, advanced search is where you wanna be. So a couple of things I wanna point out is it has built-in Boolean searching, those and or not fields. When you say and, you're narrowing your search because you want both things in your search. If you click or, you're saying this or that. So this is a great thing when you want synonyms. If you're doing something on say climate change and global warming, you could use the or field. So you're finding information on both of those key terms. Not means I do not want this thing showing up in my search. The best example I have of this is I was helping a student who wanted to talk about Latin education in high schools. And he was focusing on the toga wearing dead language, but he kept getting information on Latin America. So I said, put not Latin America, and that removed all the information he did not want to see. So I'm gonna go back to our fun basic search here. And as you'll see, we also have these options to search within a field. If you do not pick a field, it defaults to all text. You have the ability to select all text, you can look for an author, you can limit to title, subject matter, and all of these other fields. What you search in is going to change based on what database you are searching in. If you are using one of our business databases per se, you will be able to look by, um, here you can actually do it too, ticker field or ticker symbol, so what it is on the stock exchange. You can search by company, you can search by people and things like that. This will change depending on what database you are in. And if you join us later for our uh, one of our webinar sessions on our individual databases, you will learn all of those skills from the vendors themselves. I like to leave it at all text, but one thing I have noticed students like is to go into the abstract or author supplied abstract. And I always recommend not starting here because not every article or item in a database has an abstract, but this is a great way to narrow your search quickly if you are getting way too many results because all it is doing is looking into that summary provided by the author or the vendor of that item. Scrolling down, you will see all of these filters that you can apply including full text, limiting to scholarly peer reviewed, again, the publication date range, if you know what specific publication you want, the publication type, the document type, the language, the number of pages. Some students are like, I don't wanna read anything more than 10 pages long. So they limit it by number of pages. And that can be useful if you just need like a two page article as opposed to a 25 page article. If you're looking for illustrations, you can also look here. Um, just for the purposes of this demonstration, I am not going to select any of these fields, just so I can show you within the database itself how you can add those on. It is always easier to start broad and then work your way down. So I'm going to click search here. And as you can see, we've done our gentrification search. And in this database, we only have 3,300 resources. That's comparable. That is far less than 47,000 we had in our UDC search. So this is why we always tell students, when you are doing your work, always look in more than one database because you are going to find different results in each one. So scrolling down, just like in UDC search, all of those filters that were on the advanced page, on the advanced search page are now available here to you on the left-hand side. So say you wanna to limit to academic articles, you can do that right here. <clears throat> And there you go, you can see the academic articles that are available in this database. From here, you can either click on the HTML full text or the PDF directly, but I always recommend going into the actual information page for that result itself. When you click on that, you'll be taken to the page where again, all of those hyperlinks appear. And this is a great way to find related research because you will see associated keywords, you will see the abstract with your search terms bolded, um, depending on what database you are in and what subject matter you are looking at, you will also see hyperlinked references. So if you scroll all the way down here, this is a long one, you will see these references. And depending on the database you are in, some of these are hyperlinked. So, you know, that's a great way to get a lot of resources quickly. All of the tools are available to you. You can print it, email it, save it. Again, that wonderful site button we like to point out to students all the different citation styles to cut and paste into their um, uh, works cited page. You have a permalink. You can add it to a folder, Google Drive. Again, all of these features are available to you and your students when you do search. So I'm going to go back to the results list. 
And as you can see, most of these here are available directly in our database. But as you can see, some of them are not in this database. You will see this UDC link to full text. And I want to caution and say, well, this is a great feature. It only works about 50% of the time. This is our attempt to try to link to a resource. So what this database is saying, hey, I know this article exists. It's just not in this database. So the UDC link to full text tries to link you to that full text if it is available in another database. So in this case, it does not look as if this article is available in a full text database through UDC, but you can then take the information from that citation and put in an ILL request for it. So this is a useful tool. Um, you know, if you're trying to find resources, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's just a matter of not all the vendors play nicely. And I could go on and on and on about that. So this was our crash course introduction in library databases. I am going to now open the floor for any questions you may have about using the database. Um, we are also here to at, uh, answer any basic questions you may have about using the library itself. Um, so if you have a question, please feel free to ask to unmute yourself or pop it in the chat and I would be happy to answer it. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions come in right now. So what I, oh, hang on, I am seeing one come in. One moment, please. All right. Hey, good morning, Megan. Good morning, Aaron. How may I help you? Hi, how you doing? I had a question. I've seen um, you show how to pin, um, pin different searches. Where mm -hmm. do we go to uncover those when we actually log back on? So when you log into your library account, and I'm back on the library's homepage here, if you scroll over down in the bottom box, you will see here my library account. And you'll be taken to your library account. Again, you are logging in as an external user. And in your library account, not only will you see any of the items you have checked out. So here's a wonderful tour of everything I have checked out. Um, once you are logged in, Hopefully, there we go. Um, up here in the main bar, you will see this pin. And it's a, if you just click on it where it says go to my favorites, you will see any of your saved item records or if you have saved searches. So I'll just go to your library account and log in and that's where you'll find the information. And actually, I'm gonna jump back in. And if you go to your library account again, if you are interested in putting in an ILL request, that is on your main library account page you will see this ILL request. You sign in to interlibrary loan. And here you can submit your new request or see if you have an item available to you uh, that was fulfilled. Yes, someone asked in the chat, given the COVID lockdowns, how long is it taking a WRLC book to arrive? Pre-COVID, it was generally 24 to 48 hours. Now it's taking about a week. Um, part of that is due to, we are down to one courier simply for safety purposes. And part of that is due to the library. UDC is only open Monday, Tuesday, and Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And so we are only available to process those items three days a week. Okay. RefWorks. So RefWorks is an online um, citation management system. Some schools have it, some schools do not. It is from ProQuest. So when you log into RefWorks, um, this is something you can sign up for on your own. Um, UDC is not um, a member of this, but you can sign up for your own account. But like RefWorks, what we really recommend is Zotero. This is a citation management system. It is completely free and you can export those citations um, from any of our databases to your Zotero account. So um, while we don't have a built-in RefWorks button like the other schools, you can use Zotero and use the same functionality to export the citation. And it is available 
on the web, on the desktop. It's got a built-in uh, button here where you can save things. It is fantastic. And uh, one function I do want to point out for your students, if they do decide to use it, I'm just going to click on this here. They have the ability to add notes. They also have the ability to share things. So say they're doing group research and you can see a couple of my colleagues and I were doing some searches. Uh, we can share things in one file so that we're all seeing the same files and that we can leave notes for one another if we think an article is good or not or things like that. Um, in some instances, you can also attach the PDF itself so that you can have all of your items in one location. And what is a great feature for this? If you click on two things, you can build your biography and just pick your MLA. And again, this doesn't do um, the in-text citation, but it is very helpful for creating those citation uh, lists at the end of a research paper. Are there any other questions? Just in, I'll wait a few more minutes to see if any of those come in. I have dropped a link to an assessment form from today's session in the chat, if you would be so kind as to fill that out. This is our first time trying a series like this, so we would love to hear feedback from you on what you liked, what you didn't like, and what you'd like to see in the future. Um, as a reminder, you will receive a recording of this within the coming days. It will be hosted through our YouTube, so you will have access to that permanently, even if you do not save the link to the session. You will also be given a certificate of attendance if you've attended this session live, hopefully within a week, but I promise you it will get to you before uh, the end of this tenure cycle um, for your TK20 portfolios. Okay, I am going to stop recording and I'd like again to thank you uh, for attending today. And